Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about graphing tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. We're going to start off with graphing y equals tan x by first filling in a table of values. I know that when I'm finding y equals tan x, this really comes from the unit circle. And we know that on that unit circle, this is the point 1, 0. This is the point 0, 1, negative 1, 0 and zero negative one. I also know that tan theta is equal to y over x. So if that's the case, let's just start at zero. So tan of zero is gonna be y over x. So that's zero divided by one, that's zero. Tan of pi over two, y over x, one divided by zero is undefined. Tan of pi, zero divided by negative one is zero. Tan of 3 pi over 2, negative 1 over 0 is undefined. And then back around, tan of 2 pi is going to be 0. So I see that this just jumps back and forth between 0 and undefined. So it's going to do the same thing going the other way. Undefined, 0, undefined, 0. I know that whenever a function is undefined that I have a vertical asymptote. So I have vertical asymptotes at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and negative 3 pi over 2. I have x-intercepts at 0, 0, pi, 2 pi, negative pi, and negative 2 pi. So from the table, this is all that I have to graph, right? So something that I want to think about, if I think about tan of pi over 4, I know that tan of pi over 4 is equal to 1, and I know tan of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. So those points are actually going to help me now fill in the shape of this graph. So tan is going to curve up to pi over 4, 1, and then hug that asymptote. And then over here, it's going to go down to negative pi over 4, and then hug that other asymptote. Tan x is just like sine x and cosine x. It's just going to re keep repeating the same curve in each of these sectioned off asymptotes. So at 5 pi over 4, I'm going to have 1. At 3 pi over 4, I'm going to have negative 1. Through the point, hug the asymptote. Through the point, hug the asymptote. Over here at 7 pi over 4, I would be at negative 1. And I'm not going past 2 pi. I'm just going this way. So I'm going to go through that point and hug the asymptote. And I'm going to do the same thing for these guys over here. If I look at the general form for the tangent function, the general form we're going to look at is y equals a tan bx plus c plus d. The period of the tan function is equal to pi over the absolute value of b. And the period of a tangent function is a little bit different than the period of a sine or cosine function. The period of the tangent function represents the distance between those vertical asymptotes. So I know in this example up here that b was equal to 1. So pi over 1 is pi, so the period is 1, which means the distance between the per vertical asymptotes should be pi units. The distance from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is 1 whole pi. The difference from a half pi to 1 and a half pi is 1 pi. So the period of this tangent function is pi units. In order to find the actual equation of these asymptotes, we can solve these two equations. So bx plus c equals negative pi over 2, and bx plus c equals pi over 2. That's going to allow us to plot each of the asymptotes that we need. From there, we'll be able to figure out the x-intercept by dividing that distance in half. And then I can just fill in each of those shapes based on whatever sections of the asymptotes I have graphed. So let's graph a couple of these. First, I have y equals tan of 2x. So I first want to identify the period, the b value, and the c value. I'm not adding or subtracting anything inside the parentheses, so c is 0. The number in front of x is b, so that's 2. And then we said that the period of a tangent function is pi over the absolute value of b, which in this case is pi. So again, this tells me the distance between my vertical asymptotes is pi. I now need to solve the two equations bx plus c equals negative pi over 2 and bx plus c equals pi over 2. So if I plug in b here, I have 2x plus 0, I don't need to write that, is equal to negative pi over 2. To solve for x, I multiply by a half and I get x is equal to negative pi 
over 4. Do the same thing over here. B is 2. C is 0. So 2x is equal to pi over 2. If I multiply by a half on both sides, I get x is pi over 4. So I know that I have vertical asymptotes at negative pi over 4 and at pi over 4. These vertical asymptotes now are pi over 2 units apart. That's the period. That makes sense. So I know that every one, two tick marks on my x-axis, I'm going to need a vertical asymptote. So one, two, vertical asymptote. One, two, vertical asymptote. And then there would be another one over here, but I don't need to graph that because it's not on here. And do the same thing in the opposite direction. Halfway between each of these asymptotes, I have an x-intercept. So if they're all two units apart, one unit in between is going to give me an x-intercept. So I have an x-intercept at negative three pi over two, pi, negative pi over two, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Now, in between each of those asymptotes, I just follow that same sketch from before. So it hugs the asymptote and then goes through the x-axis and hugs again. So I'm just going to fill in each of these sections. At the end over here, this would start down here and then shoot up through. But since my graph is ending at 2 pi, I'm just going to leave it like that. And over here, this one should be coming up towards that asymptote and hugging. But again, I don't need to graph the down piece over here because my graph ends over there. Number two, y equals negative tan of a half x. This negative here is important. It's going to be the same thing as if I had a negative sine x or a negative cos x. So that tells me that I'm just reflecting over the x-axis. So rather than my graph going up like this the whole way, it's going to go down the whole way instead. It's just going to flip right over. I'm still going to pull out the period B and C as well. So the period here is pi over B and B is a half. So my period in this case is 2 pi. C is still 0. I'm going to solve the equations BX plus C equals negative pi over 2 and BX plus C equals pi over 2 to find the equations of those asymptotes. So b is a half, so I have 1 half x equals negative pi over 2. If I multiply both sides by 2, I get x equals negative pi. On this side, same idea. I have 1 half x is equal to pi over 2, and I get x is equal to pi. So I have an asymptote at negative pi and positive pi. I can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, my vertical asymptotes are eight units apart. There's not eight units over here, so I don't need another asymptote to the right or to the left. I know that halfway between these asymptotes, I have an x-intercept, so half of eight is four. That's going to be here. Halfway between the x-intercept and this vertical asymptote, I'm going to pass through a y value of one and negative one. But since this is negative tan x, Rather than going up, I have to go down first. So at pi over 2, I'm going to be at negative 1. And at negative pi over 2, I'm going to be at positive 1. And then that's going to shoot up and hug that asymptote. And then this one's going to shoot down and hug this asymptote. Now over here, I know that I have an x-intercept 4 units away from that vertical asymptote. So that's at 2 pi. And since I have this left section of this graph, I have this section. So I have a y value of 1 halfway between. So 1, 2 is going to be halfway. That's right here. And that's going to shoot through that point and hug the asymptote. And this left section over here, 4 units from the vertical asymptote, I have an x-intercept. And this follows that same shape, right? So this should be going down and hugging the asymptote over here. Halfway between the 4 is 2. So at negative 3 pi over 2, I have a y value of negative 1. And this graph shoots down and then hugs the asymptote. There's y equals negative tan of 1 half x. Now we're going to graph some reciprocal trig functions. So the first function we're going to look at is y equals cotan x. I'm going to first start figuring this out by setting up a table. So I'm going to set up a table that has x, tan x, and cotan x all on one table. This is going to end up having a pattern just like tan x did. So I'm going to just start at 0. So 0 pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 2 pi. We know that tan of 0 was 0. So I was 0 undefined 0 undefined 0. I also know 
that y equals cotan x is the same thing as 1 over tan x. So if I want tan of 0, I would do 1 over tan of 0. So 1 over 0 is undefined. For tan x here, 1 over undefined, that's weird. However, I know that this tan value came from the unit circle. This from pi over 2, y over x, was 1 divided by 0. So if I flip that, 0 divided by 1 is 0. For tan of pi, 1 over tan of pi would be 1 over 0. That's undefined. Same thing happens at 3 pi over 2. This point on the unit circle was 0, negative 1. So cotan is now not negative 1 over 0. It's 0 over negative 1, so that's 0. I can see now that this is just bouncing back and forth between undefined and 0, just like tangent did. It's just that my vertical asymptotes are going to be every pi units rather than every pi over 2. I'm going to start by graphing those asymptotes. So I'm going to have them every pi units. So 0, pi, 2 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. I see that I'm still going to be 0 halfway in between them. So I have a 0 at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2. So if I think about these pi over 4 spots, so if I put in pi over 4 on my table, I know that tan of pi over 4 was 1. Cotan is 1 over tan. So 1 over 1 is still 1. It's that same value. So at pi over 4, I should be at positive 1. This now has to follow the same shape as before. So at 3 pi over 4, I'm going to be at negative 1. So now my graph is going to look something like this. And that shape is going to follow through everywhere. So I'm going to be at positive 1, negative 1. Go through that point, hug the asymptote. Go through this point, hug the asymptote. Over here, same deal, positive 1, negative 1. Shoot through the point, hug the asymptote, shoot through the point, hug the asymptote. There's y equals cotan x. Next, we have graph the function y equals sine x on the grid and use it to graph y equals cosecant x. We're going to do this the same way we figured out cotan x. So I'm going to set up a table first that has x, sine x, and cosecant x. 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I know that sine of 0 is 0, and then I bounce back and forth to 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And I'm going to graph sine x on here while I'm at it. So I know I have 0, 0, pi over 2, I'm at 1, pi is 0, 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, 2 pi is 0. Going the opposite direction, negative pi over 2 is negative 1, negative pi is 0, negative 3 pi over 2 is positive 1, and negative 2 pi is 0. And I'm just going to connect. So there's y equals sine x. To figure out cosecant x, I know that cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine x. So for cosecant of 0, I would have 1 over sine of 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. So there's actually going to be an asymptote there for the function cosecant x at pi over 2. 1 over sine of pi over 2 is 1 over 1. That's 1. 1 over 0, that's undefined. 1 over negative 1, that's negative 1. And 1 over 0, that's undefined. So what I'm noticing first is that wherever sine of x had an x-intercept, cosecant of x is going to have an asymptote. So I'm going to fill in my asymptotes for cosecant of x first. So I have an asymptote at 0, pi, and 2 pi. And then going the opposite direction from 0, wherever again I have an x-intercept. So at pi, negative pi rather, and negative 2 pi. Now the other points that I'm able to figure out from this table, at pi over 2 I'm at 1. At 3 pi over 2 I'm at negative 1. So wherever I have a max or a min on sine, cosecant is going to share that same point. So cosecant is going to have a point here, and cosecant is going to have a point here at those maxes and mins. What I have to kind of figure out now is what's going on between 0 and pi for cosecant x. 
So what I want to think about here, my Y values from zero to pi over two are between zero and one, right? Say they're an eighth, a fifth, a third, a half, right? They're getting closer and closer to one, but they're still between zero and one. If I do one over those fractions, so one over a half, one over a third, one over a fourth, those are two, three, four, right? If I keep change, flip those values. So actually, as I get closer and closer to this intercept over here, or this asymptote rather, this function is going to start shooting up to infinity because that number is going to end up getting really big. Again, what's happening is that y value is going a half, a third, a fifth, an eighth, a tenth. So that denominator is getting bigger. So when you multiply by that bigger denominator, that y value for cosecant is going to get bigger and bigger. Same thing over here. It's going to approach positive infinity. Now this shape, see how it, cosecant x just flipped over from sine x? This is going to occur in each of these sections of my graph now. So over here, this graph just flips down. Over here, this graph flips down. And over here, this graph flips up. There's my graph for y equals cosecant x. Graph y equals cosine x and use it to graph y equals secant x. I'm going to do this one a little bit quicker than the other two because now hopefully we're kind of getting the idea. I'm going to graph cosine x first. So I know that that bounces back and forth from 1, 0, negative 1. So 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. And now I know that secant is 1 over cosine. So wherever I would have a 1 over 0, so at these x-intercepts, I'm going to have asymptotes again just like I did for cosecant. So I'm going to have an asymptote at pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and negative 3 pi over 2. Wherever I have a max or a min, that's going to also be a value on the graph of secant x. So secant x has a point here, a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here. From there, I know that secant x is just going to be a reflection of cosine x over the max or the min value. So this graph flips up. This graph flips down. This graph flips up. And then this guy over here flips up as well. Oop, I missed one more down here. There we go. There's my graph for y equals secant x. We're not going to be shifting and moving around secant, cosecant, or cotan. They're just something that you need to see and you need to be able to graph. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.